All right, so picking up from where we left off last time, the shadows steamrolled everything and made it to the sacred tree. So they were winning battle after battle. They were pretty much 5-0 at this point. The Telenites, on the other hand, kept losing, so they kept retreating, retreating, and retreated all the way back to the sacred tree. So the Telenites got wrecked. They're 0-5 at this point. I don't know why they're still in it. Should have just done the smart thing like the Yang Zings. Who are pretty much extinct right now. Yang Zings went 0-2 drop. You know, Talonites are just playing on. Yeah, they retreated back to the Sacred Trees. Joined back up with the secret forces that Sombre and Kekrion left behind to protect this Sacred Tree. So that being the Ritual Beast, Necros, Exciton, and Leo. Yeah, and they're forming an alliance to protect the Sacred Tree from the Shadows. Exciton and Leo shared some of their divine powers with these two old guys, Ritual Beast Elder and Great Sorcerer of Necros. But these two old men managed to erect a barrier around the Sacred Tree, preventing the Shadows from coming in, which is ironic, since they managed to erect the whole entire barrier, but couldn't erect some other small things. But yeah, this barrier was a problem for the Shadows, since their objective was to get the 10 cores, as well as the divine power, powers of destruction, stuff like that, to Tiara to revive him. So, they couldn't do that. They couldn't reach the tree. As for the head-on confrontation against the Alliance, they weren't doing so well in that either. I mean, as you know, Shadow's only chance at beating Necros is flipping Mistake, and Mistake isn't a dual terminal card. So the Shadows had to think up, or rather Tiara who was manipulating the shadows had to think up of a strategy and what he came up with was they needed someone to deconstruct the barrier and to do that you need a lot of spiritual power ritual beast tamer wen is a prodigy born with a lot of spiritual power so they went after wen corrupting her into wendigo meanwhile the alliance launched the full-scale attack and managed to take down our shadow grista now luckily for the Shadows, they didn't put all of their eggs in one basket. Grista was holding the 10 cores, Construct was holding Kerakion and the Powers of Destruction, and Winda was holding the Divine Energy, which I'll get to later. But yeah, the Alliance went all out to kill Grista, and then they're like, oh shit, we forgot to defend the tree, and Wendigo has already deconstructed the barrier. Winda, the one with the Divine Energy, now she got the Divine Energy because she got fucking obliterated by Sophia when Sophia was on a rampage in the previous war. So yeah, she got killed by Divine Energy so her body was filled with Divine Energy. And all it took was Winda touching the tree to boot up the Clifford system. Now booting up the Clifford system launched the whole fucking tree into orbit and all the Cliffords came out. Now the Clifford managed to absorb the 10 cores where the corpse of Grista was, the 10 cores from the corpse of Grista, and used those as energy sources. So these were the 10 Clifforts. Now the Clifforts were kind of like antiviruses of the dual terminal world, if you see the dual terminal world as like a computer. And they're responsible for wiping out all anomalies from the world. Now the Shadows were the anomalies here, since they were soulless bodies. You know, bodies supposed to have souls in them. The Shadows, like, achieved their main objective already, which was getting to the tree, and they booted up the Clifford system. Now, unfortunately for them, the Clifford system was out to kill them. Now, I like to call this, you know, the Shadows getting the martyr treatment. They're like, fucking 501 at this point, undefeated, and then they get backstabbed by completing, because they completed their objective. Now, although Clifford has a very good Shadow matchup, you know, they're just swiping them out. They couldn't actually kill Construct. Construct was still too strong. Construct at this point had Kerakion inside of her. So she was, you know, god tier at this point. And it doesn't help that the Clifford player pretty much misplayed. Probably like Pendulum summon all of the Cliffords instead of Tribute summoning some of them. So they just all get wrecked by Construct's effect. So here the Cliffords joined forces with our Teller Knight Ritual Beast. Necro's alliance to take down Construct. So the Clifford provided the energy source 
and pretty much the prison for Construct. So that was Towers. Towers, Towers role was to find Construct. Galteros, who still had Karakir on staff, you know, we know that staff combines things together, uh, used it to combine Construct with Towers, forming Shekinaga. You know, with Towers binding Construct from the outside, as well as Karakion resisting from the inside, Construct was stopped. But just to make it doubly sure, Shurik came in and used the powers of all three Ice Barrier Dragons to freeze Shekinaga. And this is pretty much the end of Shadows. You know, Shido this is where Shadows dropped out, even though they were doing really well. Without Grista or Construct to lead them, the Clifford just wiped them the fuck out. Now when it came to El Shadow Winder, who had godly divine powers from Sophia. The Clifford system encountered an error, because, you know, mortals aren't supposed to have divine power. Now, this led to two things. One of the things is the Clifford short-circuiting and deciding to kill every living thing on the planet. The other thing is that since Tiara had access to divine energy via the Clifford, Tiara was able to invoke the awakening of the Infernoids. And, and the Infernoids were under the direct control of Tiara. So Tiara didn't have to manipulate things anymore. He had his own army trying to revive him, trying to get the three pieces required for his revival. You know, the Infernoids were just wiping out everything. So it was kind of like a three-way battle now. The Cliffords, which were wiping out everything, the Infernoids, which was also wiping out everything, and the Alliance, which were the guys trying to not get wiped out by everything. Sucks to be on this team. So Team Living had to think up some plans, get some new allies. At some point, the Telenites managed to get Capella and Rigel. Also at some point, Trevor managed to unfuse itself somehow. But the big play here was Dance Princess used both Necro's Mirror and Gishki Aqua Mirror to form a cycle to revive the dead. And the one she chose to revive was Gen Nightmaster Diamond. Because we know Diamond turned into Karen Gorgon, who turned into Shadow Core, who turned into Grista. So Dance Princess was managed to revive Diamond from the remains of Grista. So I guess the good guys got a new boss monster on their side. Didn't last long though. Diamond pretty much immediately fused himself with Telenite Cyrus, Procyon, Capella, and Rigel to form the Telenite Constella Diamond. Now Diamond was doing really good. He pretty much led the Alliance to wipe out all of the Clifford's and Infernoids, except the two big boss ones, Onoku and Deviati. I have no idea how, you know, Diamond managed to beat Clifford. Doesn't seem like there's much interactions there. But um, Diamond is pretty cool against Infernoid because it prevents them from activating reasoning and stuff like that. He managed to come face to face with Infernoid Onoku, thinking he's hot shit and all, just wiping out all of these Cliffords and Infernoids like they were nothing. But he got fucking bodied by Onoku. You know, right before Onoku killed Diamond, Sombre appears out of nowhere along with Ding Long, which he just materialized the ninth Yang Zing and was like, I still need him. Cuts off Onoku's hand and then Diamond force lightnings Onoku outside the fucking window. I'm just joking, this isn't directed by George Lucas. Ding Long didn't do shit for like a long time, which is why I guess it's introduced so early in the story, but didn't get released like until six sets later. Now what was important here was Sombre herself showing up, Sombre fused herself with Diamond, as well as all of the Telenites that were still alive. Not sure who they are. The story didn't actually explicitly say who died, but you know, from this point onwards, there was only going to be one Telenite, and that was Telenite Ptolemaeus. So Telenite Ptolemaeus probably had like fucking 10 exceed materials under it, and it just like, you know, skipped Onoku's turn, and killed it. Yeah, I don't know how Telemias killed it. Maybe it ranked up into like the Gwozak or something. You know, 3200 attack. But yeah, Telemias will just give it the benefit of the doubt since it does have Sombre in it. 
which is a god. But yeah, they managed to defeat Sonoku. This should be the end, right, of the battle. Nope, they forgot fucking Deviati. Whoops. So Deviati knew she was pretty fucked, since all of her buddies got fucking destroyed. She was the only one left. Her only advantage was that the Allied forces forgot she existed, so she could do whatever the fuck she wants for a while. But, you know, since all of her teammates were fucking useless, she had to carry the team and complete the objective of reviving Tiara. So Deviati went around the battlefield and gobbled up all of the vacuum tubes of the for fallen infernoids. Like waga 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 like Pac-Man. So she has the 10 fragments already. Next she went to the void trap hole where Shikanaga was sealed. So the powers of destruction was held by Shikanaga. She broke the seal, absorbed the powers of all three ice barrier dragons. So this was when Shurit felt something was up since he was the one who used to use the power of the three Ice Barrier Dragons. But yeah, Deviati fused herself with Shikanaga, acquiring Constructs powers, who had Karakion's powers, as well as Epoclifort Towers power, all into one, forming Al Shador and Onyatalus. At this point, she was the most powerful being in the world, since, you know, she just fused two previously banned cards with a god along with two currently banned cards into one. And it is said that her power was as strong as Sophia was. At this point, the only thing that can really compete with Anonyatilis was Telenipe Telemaios, since it had Sombre inside. But it wasn't enough, since they were pretty much dealing with a Sophia level threat here. So Dance Princess was like, oh shit, we can counter a Sophia level shit with Sophia. So she cosplayed as Sophia and became Necros of Sophia, putting her at a level where she could, you know, participate in this fight. Great Sorcerer of Necros was feeling pretty irrelevant at this point, so he was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna revive all eight dead Yangzings, because apparently I can do stuff like that. Now I don't know when exactly the fusion between Leo and Lara to form Gaia Pelio happened, now, the Master Guide has been pretty disappointing for Ritual Beast fans, since it barely talks about Ritual Beast at all, but I assume that this fusion happened somewhere around this time. And if it did, Guy Pelio probably could participate this godly battle between Anonyatilus, Telemaios, and Sophia. But other than that, all of our little guys were pretty irrelevant at this point. Now, none of them could even compete with the scale of this battle between the gods. So they had a lot of spare time. One of our dudes, Exa, warrior of Necros, decided to use his spare time to do something productive. So he channeled the powers of the eight Yangzings, which were previously revived by Great Sorcerer, into the eight Dragoonity tuners, who were, you know, part of the dual terminal story way back in season one. This is to form Dragoonity Divine Lance, so this holy lance that could kill gods. Now, Exa gave this lance to Sophia so that she can beat Anonyatilis. Too bad Sophia's shit and couldn't beat Anonyatilis even with the lance. But luckily enough, having Telemaios, Sophia, Divine Lance, and Anonyatilis in one place, they triggered the Sephiroth system in the Sacred Tree. Now the Sephiroth system is the opposite of the Clifford system. It's kind of like another antivirus, but a good one. So the Clifford ended up wiping out everything that was living on the planet because of a glitch. Uh, the Zephyr or the Sephiroth system is doing the opposite. So it's choosing 10 guys and giving them the power of Zephyr so that they could destroy Anoyatalus who was threatening the world. So now the Alliance had 10 more relevant guys that could fight Anoyatalus, which swung this battle in their favor, giving Telemaios and Sophia the opportunity to launch the Lance into Anonyatilis and one-shotting it. Unfortunately, they're scrubs and didn't know how to aim. They pierce Anonyatilis through the chest and not the head, a rookie mistake. And the head lived on as Decatron. Decatron took all 10 core fragments, as well as the powers of destruction, to the Sacred Tree. Now, he was still missing the powers of creation, so Tiara didn't get revived in his strongest form. 
it was revived as Infernoid Tiara instead of Tiara, Source of Destruction. Like, you would have think that after forgetting about Deviati, the good guys would have learned from that mistake, but nah, this time they forgot about Decatron. <laughs>